I want to share a story from the Bible that relates to Christmas. And I've been uh, praying for you as I prepare this message for you today. But it's just a story. It's a simple but complex, powerful, intriguing story of the Bible. It's an ancient story. It, it is in the Bible, in the Genesis, in the first book of the Bible, in chapter 18. And there's a story when this old man, old man, he's 99 years old. His name was Abraham. And the Bible says that he was, uh, you know, just in front of his tent in the middle of the desert. At the heat of the day. It was so hot as normally is in the Middle East, in the desert. So he was in front of the, test, in the tent just enjoying some, some shade, you know. And he was there just enjoying it. But then... He sees three men passing by. And as he sees them, the Bible says this 99-year-old man, he runs toward them. He sees an opportunity and says, what? Here I am. See, no cell phone, no distraction, right? No cable TV, uh, not a lot of things. No Costco to go, you know, just in the middle of the desert. This man, Abe, he was right there, just looking to the sand and the sun. And then, you know what, three men say, wow, this is something happening here. Finally, something is happening. And then he runs toward them. But you have to understand, not only he was 99, but during that time, and in certain cultures, even today, an older man, Especially an older man in a certain position, social position, they don't run. It's a little uh, shameful to run, to run. You know, you cannot just run. Kids, they run. Uh, responsible people run. Not old folks. No, we don't run. We are, we are, you know, composed. We are polite. We just walk. We, it's like the British. Just walk. Hey, sir, will you stop, please? No, 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 no. He runs toward them. And as he comes near them, the Bible says that Abraham looks at them. And the first thing he does, he bows down. And he puts his face in the ground, on the sand. And he stays there. And then he looks at them and says, where are you going? Don't just pass. Would you stay, please? Would you stay? Come to my house. Come to my tent. Would you stay? So they agree with him. And as, as, as they're coming, he says, you know what? If you stay with me, I will provide water. I will wash your feet. Desert. I will wash your feet. And then not only that, I'll provide you some meal. And then he said, okay, okay. So there were some trees, the Bible says, in the middle of the desert. And he says, would you stay here in this shade and uh, I'll be back. I will provide food for you. So he runs inside his tent. There's his wife. Her name was Sarah. Actually, the Bible describes as a beautiful woman. And Sarah is inside the tent, and he says, Sarah, Sarah, hurry, hurry. And he's in a hurry. Please prepare the best bread you can. And he even gives the measure, say, you two, three cups of this, and that's the best flour we have in store. Go there, do it. And so Sarah begins to bake the bread. So Abraham again hurries. And he goes to the herd that he has of uh, cattle and sheep and everything. And the Bible says he picks a choice calf. Very special one. The best one he had. And he himself actually slays the, the, the calf and calls one of his servants and says, prepare the calf. So he runs back to the three men. He says, wait a minute. We're just no McDonald's, no Tim Hortons. It, it takes time. It takes time. So he goes and prepares everything. And then we don't know, maybe two hours, three hours later, four hours, no microwaves, right? So what does he do? He gets everything. 
the Bible says there's yogurt. I don't know if you've ever been to a Middle East kind of meal, a house. I've been just maybe a month ago-ish. My goodness, did I eat well? So good. Oh, everything. And the Bible says Abraham brought milk and brought a yogurt and all the meat and the beef and the bread. And they ate, ate. And Abraham stood there. Just standing, just like that, as while they were eating, he was just there observing it. Like in a servant way saying, well, maybe they need something else. I'll be right here, ready, and I will help them, serve them. Wow. The Bible says, like this, verse 1, chapter 18, the Lord appears to Abraham. So the three men were not three men. This was the Lord, God. Actually, during the text, the author of the book of Genesis uses the word Yehovah. It's Jehovah, Yahweh. It's God himself. This is his name. Down below verse 9, he says, Adonai. Adonai is the name of the Lord God. So, so Abraham was just there, and he observed something was happening. This is the first thing I want to share with you today. Watch for God. Pay attention. He might be at work in your life, and you just don't see it. You just don't know it. I've told this to the church before, but something happened to me many years ago. I was flying to Costa Rica to work and with a friend, Dale, and I was at a Houston airport, right? And waiting for some connection to San Jose. And uh, so Dale went to buy some coffee, and, and, and soon Dale comes back to me, and he was running, spilling coffee everywhere. He said, Jaime, Jaime, Jaime. Oh, Jaime, my, my name, by the way. I said Jamie, but it's Jaime. But Jamie's fine. Even Bob, if you're talking to me, that's fine. So he came, Jaime, did you see, did you see it? Did you see her? Did you see her? I said, see who? Oh, this beautiful, blonde Hollywood actress. She was just side by side with me. And I didn't see her. And then I said, well, I noticed people were taking pictures of me. <laughs> I noticed, you know, with cell phone, people did, you know, like this, like this. And I... Honestly, I said, hey, wait, maybe it's me. And then I said, you know what? Maybe they think I'm her bodyguard. But the fact that I did not see, uh, and don't ask me her name. I don't know. But it was a very famous Hollywood actress right here. By the number of pictures people took, maybe she was famous. But the fact that I didn't see it. And maybe God is, and I believe he is, working in your life, in your heart. There are things happening. And you're there, sitting in front of your tent, just in the heat of the sun, of your daily routine, your daily lives, and you just don't see that God is right there. God still visits us today. He still is, and He's real. And He comes as we least expect. He doesn't announce, hey, I'm coming, be ready. No, he will one day, but right now, right here, today, he's coming and he's working your life. And my appeal to you is open your eyes, open your ears. Maybe he's speaking something to you, you just can't hear it. Maybe you hear, but you just don't understand. Say, God, give me a brain, give me a soul, give me a heart. Let me love this. Let me understand that you, God Almighty, creator of everything, even me, creator of my own life, would you speak to me? I want to hear you. Would you talk to me? Would you reveal your love to me? I want my soul desires nothing but to be loved by her creator. This is it. So watch for God. So this is Abraham, and they are eating and eating and eating, and after eating, one of them turns to Abraham and said, Abraham, where's your wife? Where's Sarah? He says. He knows her name. He knows her name. Where's Sarah, your wife? 
And Abraham said, she's there inside the tent. Oh, Abraham, a year from now, I will come back. And Sarah, will give you a son. Sarah will become pregnant. And she will deliver a baby boy, a son, to you nine months from now. She says, he says that. And the Bible says that Sarah is inside the tent. Nobody can see her. But she hears what's happening. And the Bible says that she laughs within her. It's not that she ha 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 ha. No. Inside, for herself, nobody hears Sarah laughing. She laughs. And then she says something in her mind, the Bible says. She says, how come I am going to be pregnant? Not only I am 89 years old, but I've been barren, infertile my whole life. And not only that, she says that. She mentions the, the days of my, my fertility. They're gone. I'm in menopause. Oh. I just can't have a baby. I just can't have a baby. So one of these men, they look to Abraham and says, why is Sarah laughing? Why is she saying that, that she can't have a baby? It's quite interesting, isn't it? And then he says, don't you know, there's nothing too hard for God. The Hebrew word actually is not hard. Is wonderful. It's mysterious. There's nothing too impossible for God. This is what he says. You know, you have to understand something. Abraham, he, he was not born, born there in that land. He was born some miles, some kilometers east of there. In a place called Ur. Probably most likely where it's Iraq today. And one day, 25 years before that day, that visitation, God appeared to Abraham and he called him, Abraham, you leave your land and you come to the land that I am going to give you. And I am going to bless you. And I am going to give you a son. And I am going to bless the world through this son. Wow. Wow. 25 years passed before that. So you know what? Abraham, the first thing he thought was, wow, so God is, is giving me uh, um, a son. So let me do something about it. I know I have a servant. His name is Eliezer. He's my faithful servant. It's like a son. You know what? I'll make it official. I'll go to the registry and I'll register him. He said that. He will be my adoptive son. This is it. And then I give everything I have to uh, Eleazar, my son, my adopted son. And then he will bless the world. Maybe this is it. And God said, no, Abraham, I am going to give you a son. Not you. You don't have to have a shortcut. No, it's me. It's wonderful. It's me. Okay. So he waits a little bit further. And a little bit more, a little bit more. And then Sarah has an idea. So, oh, maybe God is delaying so much to answer his promise to us, to fulfill the promise. So you know what? Maybe we can, we can help God. Abraham is still, although he's old, he was about 75, 80. But he still could have sexual relations. So you know what? I have another servant. Her name is Hagar. And you know what? They can have a son. And God says, no, Abraham. Don't you understand that? I am the one taking you from your land. I am the one giving you this land to you. From this area to this area is yours. I am giving it to you. I am blessing you. I am blessing you with a child. I am blessing the world through this child. It's me, Abraham. It's not you. Ah, oh, I don't know about you. I'm only 57, 
But I've done so much or so many things that I try to fix and give God a hand. Try to help him. There's something about my heart. I don't know about yours. But I want to be happy. I want to be fulfilled. I want to understand life, to have a purpose for my life. I want it. So I keep having shortcuts. I do things that I, I just do it myself. And then I think that it is God. Say at the end, I'm very proud to say, wow, I, I helped God in this. And we do this all the time. And sometimes we do things. They are, they are, some are funny. Some are crazy. Some are disastrous. Things that we do is just because there's a hole in our hearts. There's a question mark. We have this existential problem, a dilemma within. We want to live. We want to live forever. We want to enjoy life. We want to be happy. We want to enjoy life. We want to say at the end of our, our days, we don't just want to go back and look back and say, wow, it was a waste. It doesn't matter if you live 80 or 90 or 30 years of life. The thing is that at the end of the, the days of your life, you look back and say, wow, there was fulfillment. I really honestly live my life to the fullest. But then we have to let him do the miracles in our lives. We have to open our hearts and let him quench the thirst within. Oh. Yes, we have to. We have to trust that nothing is impossible for God. This is faith. The Bible says without faith, it's impossible for us to have a relationship with God. You don't see him, right? Do you see him? You don't. But he says he's here. So I believe it. So I have another pair of eyes. Not only this pair of eyes, but I have other pairs of eyes. Like by faith, I see him in my life. So by faith, I trust the God who has purpose for my life. He will make wonders in my life. Here and then. When his son comes back. Wow. So first, watch for God. Be alert. Look around. See if something is happening. See, wow. Is this happening? Is this God right now speaking to me? Don't resist. He's the voice your soul yearns, desires so much since birth. It's, it's, it's like, you know, you hear that sweet, powerful, loving voice. Oh, wow, I know this voice. This is the voice of he who actually loves me. So don't resist him. Watch for God. Number two, believe. Know that there's absolutely nothing impossible for him. I'll say the, the third thing that I want to say is this. Sarah laughed. But Genesis chapter 21, it's nine months later, the Bible says God visited Sarah and she gave birth to a son. And she presented at Abraham, a hundred year old man. The Bible says he was good as dead. Sexually speaking. So they came to the, to the very bottom. There's nothing else they could do. She was nine years old. She was barren, infertile. She was in menopause. He was impotent. He couldn't have sexual relations anymore. She mentioned this in the text. If you're curious and read the text later. She says, I can't have pleasure with my, my husband anymore. It's done. It's over. So once there's nothing else, you see, this is it. This is from God. You know I have this life, but I provide it for myself. Oh, it's different. When that baby was born, every single person around them would know, knew that that was God. 
That was a God moment. That was divine intervention in their lives. And Sarah is still sweating with the labor of the birth. Sarah is still in pain. She takes the babe in her hands, the Bible says, and she says, his name will be Isaac. Well, if you're like me and you speak, uh, you don't speak Hebrew, you just don't know, right? But in Hebrew, his name is Isaac. Isaac. We say Isaac. But she said Isaac. You know what Isaac means? Laughter. <laughs> Isaac means to laugh. To smile. And she says, his name will be laughter. And I want, she says, I want all of you to laugh, to enjoy with me because God has blessed me. Although she naturally did not believe what God had promised, God still was faithful. And this is the process of our salvation. See, when God wants to save us, it's the same as the story of Abraham. She said, I take you from that land. I bring you to this land. I'm going to give this land to you. I'm going to give you a son. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless the world through this son. And same with you and I. It's not us bribing God. It's not us trying to, to behave in a way that maybe, who knows, God will pay attention to us and he will, ah, I like you. No. It's, oh, grace. It's all God's initiative. It's God visiting us. Visiting you here tonight and say, I am going to bless you. But you have to believe it. You know what? 2,000 years later, after Abraham, an angel. His name was Gabriel. And he presents himself to a girl. A lady. A virgin. Her name was Mary. She was virgin. She'd never been with a man before. And Gabriel comes to Mary and said, Mary, you're most favored above all women. God is giving you a child. And Mary says, How come it be, my Lord? How come? I'm a virgin. I've never been with a man before. How come is he giving me a child? And the angel says, what? Is there anything impossible for God? Same thing as he said 2,000 years before to Abraham. Is there anything impossible to God? And then he gives a son to Mary. And he says, and his name shall be Jesus. Yoshua. Yeshua, he saves. God saves is his name. He will save the world. Yeah. 33 years later, one day before his death, in John chapter 17, knowing that he was going to the cross, the baby born from Mary. Jesus, now a man. Facing cross, eye to eye. He says to his disciples, I will be back. And I'm going to give you my joy. And nobody will take it from you. I just can say, but hallelujah. That he's coming back. And this laughter, this joy will fill my mouth. And my life will understand the reality. All the suffering, all the injustice, everything that we see around us upside down the world the way it is. Wars everywhere, famine everywhere, violence everywhere. One day, he says, I am going to give you joy. And nobody will be able to rob it. To take it from you. But you have to believe it. This is Christmas. This is Christmas. The God of impossible. Saving you. And I. Sinners. It was impossible for us to be saved. How could I save myself? 
Spiritually speaking, I'm dead. As a pastor of 30 years, I perform many funerals. I touch them. They're dead. They cannot say, well, I've been tired of being dead. I better wake up now. Someone has to wake you up. So God says, I come to the world. I rescue you. I save you. I give you life. And I'll give you joy. And one day, this joy will reign in your heart. And nobody will take it from you. No this is the miracle of Christmas. And this is why we sing hallelujah. Praises, worship, is, worship be to God. He who saved me. His name, the Bible says, is Emmanuel. Tomorrow morning I'll be here. I'll be speaking about this Jesus that was born as a gift who entered our lives to give us life. Life appeared. And he wants you to have life too. So it's a beautiful music, yes, beautiful worship, beautiful music, wow. But it has to be more than that. I want someone to call the choir, please, and say that uh, they should come now. And again, we're going to sing the last song for us. And then I'm going to pray for us, all of us. And uh, my prayer for you is that as you enjoy the song and the worship, my prayer is that you, not only that, you open your heart tonight. And you say, God, I believe there's no impossible for you. Or maybe you're not there yet. Or maybe you just can't say, God, I want to believe that. Just like Sarah, laughing, not really believing that God could give her, but he was still faithful to do it. Maybe you just can't be straightforward, honest to God and say, God, I think this is beautiful. I wish I could believe. Just say it. He's here. Closer than you think. Say it. He will hear you.